Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did a lot of remixes after after 5.1. I, mean, I did a, you know quite a lot of remixes for 5.1. We mix, mixed that in surround, and then for the for this new project, the idea was just to. It was actually initially started off to be a different project. <laughs> uh, the idea initially, my idea started off a bit different. As I started to kind of work with other people, as opposed to doing my own thing on my own. I, I don't really like working on my own, just on my own. That's why I have a musical partner, Michael Adam, who we share the studio with and we work together on everything. Because I, I find that it's an easier process to kind of like bounce ideas off and, you know, the creative process is, is different if you work with somebody else. I don't like sitting in the studio on my own. I did some tracks with Queen of Hearts, this girl from England, she's from Liz, Liz Morphew. She, she had this project, this album project, which I, I worked on a couple of tracks for her. And I just decided to expand those ideas a little bit, put more like, strings on one track and make one track a bit more dancey and longer. And then I thought, well, they're, they're quite good. And, 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 and I wasn't going to just let them just kind of just like put them out and just like see what happened. I could work with some other people and then, and, uh, and for example, the KVB who live here, um, we did a, something together. I did a remix for them for White Walls and then we decided we'd make this track for, uh, for my album. And as it started, I thought I wanted to make an album which was a bit more black and white, if you like. It's like, you know, it's got some dark bits, it's got some white light bit, you know, Echoes is quite a, a poppy, if you like, whereas like KVB is very dark. And I thought, you know, that's a sort of similar kind of like symbolism of the city as it was in the 80s of, you know, black and white, you know, dark and light, which depending whatever side of the, the, the wall you lived on, you know, and how you perceive things. But And as this kind of like theme started to regenerate itself, say, for example, uh, politically, you know, the idea that people thought that building a wall would be an ideal solution to solve everybody's problems. I thought, well, that's not, it's not just the physical wall that people are building, it's also the mental wall that people are building. And politically and just generally every day, you know, you see this every, every day manifesting itself and the way people write on Facebook and Twitter. It's, you know, this is not the future that I imagined it was going to be. You know, the 21st century was supposed to be flying cars and robots in the home, you know, uh, like the Jetsons, you know, that's how I imagined the future to be, you know, and it's, and it's not that. And, and I thought, well, maybe people need to like, be told, you know, like, or maybe aware of their positions and the way they believe you know that that, that it's not always that, that way and through music it's a very powerful medium people listen to music and and I think that the idea you know, the idea that you can transport some message through music the album starts off quite dark with this kind of foreboding message of like an immediate nuclear attack because I think you know that is something which is constantly was a, as, as a definite feature of living in West Berlin in the 80s this constant fear that people had, even if they never spoke about it. It was always kind of hanging over Berlin as this kind of, the, this was always the place where the Third World War was going to start, you know. It's like we were told this constantly. That's why the troops of America and Britain and France and the Soviet Union were here to make sure that this didn't happen. You know? And I thought, well, that's a, a recurring theme which kind of manifests itself today. So I thought I'd put that, those elements into, the, into this album and kind of try and draw people's attention to that. Yes, of course it could. I mean, I said to people, it's, it's really basically collaborative part two, but I thought by giving it a word, I, I actually wanted people to see the word Marstadt, and I wanted the word to be like absorbed into the uh, English language in some way, like Hinterland, Kindergarten, or Waldsterben, you know, the words, they, they're, they've become English as it, part of the English language too. So I thought Marstadt is a perfect word for this kind of like, like walled in city, you know, or walled in country for that matter. I just liked them on Facebook, I think, and then they just wrote to me. Yeah, I, I like the music. I thought their, their album, last album, especially the last album, was, was a brilliant album. I really, really enjoyed listening to that. And I play the tracks when I've been DJing, so I was thinking, oh, it's got, you know, if, if we can do something together, we'll have a, a coffee and meet, meet them and find out, you know. And so it just, just kind of manifested itself. They sent me like this snippet of, a, of an idea of a song that they didn't know where it was going to go, some sequence that they had. And I just kind of like added everything to that and then they sent it back to them and they added their bits. Yeah, just going back and forth and we'd meet and just talk about it and how we wanted it to sound and, and then I just added all these bits and that was it. It, was quite, it, was, it wasn't very complicated. I expected it to be more complicated, more complicated with others. Yes, yeah, so they, they did their entire tour. They supported Human League on the entire European tour actually. Well, Echoes was a band that I'd 
I pr produced their first first track on 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 five point one. I can't even remember how I got in touch with this band. I think that somebody else told me they had an, a contact to them or something. I can't remember. I, I mentioned it to somebody else that I really liked this band. I thought they, they had some good ideas, and I thought maybe you know maybe we could do something together with them. And I got in touch with them somehow. And and we just we just started working on 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 this one track. And when I came to do this new album, I said, Have you got anything that we can maybe do something together? You know, we can work on. Uh, they had like a basic idea of a song, a couple of songs, and I just made them into what they are on the album, really. A bit Italo disco. Yeah, of course, yeah. Because I love Italo, Italo disco. I come from that era, you know, and it's yeah. like... I, try, I, you know, I thought, how does that, I want this track to feel? It has to have that kind of, like, feeling to it. Uh, what One heartbeat and the other one is called electricity. And, uh, you know, I wanted one to be a bit more, maybe not so disco-y, yeah? but the other one is definitely very, very disco. Um, through uh, Electricity Club, actually, through Chi, who runs Electricity Club. He introduced me to her, and I did a remix for her for a track called Neon, and she really, really liked that, and we just decided to make some music together, and I wrote a couple of songs for her, which ended up on her album. And I just decided that the, the versions that we wrote, we wrote for her album were quite short, you know, three-minute kind of like radio versions, if you like. And I just decided I'll just expand them a little bit, and I added for one of the songs, which was a bit more kind of depressive, I added some more strings, made it even more kind of like tragic. Yeah, but she's a great singer. I think she's got, she's got a fantastic voice and she's a really good performer as well. Yeah, Maya. Yeah. Very different, you know, she, very quick actually. She, she you know, I, I gave her the basic idea of what I wanted to do and asked her, you know, to write a kind of rough lyric, you know, and then when she wrote, she wrote me this like what her lyric, she, she presented it to me and I just kind of wrote, rewrote it for her so it was easy to sing and then we just, I, the song just kind of just fell together. I already had the actual song, more or less, more or less. Uh, not the song that you hear on the album, but a different basic idea. And I sent that to her and asked her if she liked that, she would be able to sing on that. And she, and she came back pretty quickly, actually, within a few days and said, this is my basic idea. I gave her a kind of rough idea of what I wanted. And then she, she, she wrote this song, you know, the basic lyric for that. And then I kind of like amended it for her. So it was easier for us to sing it, and then she sang it, and with her husband together, they did a few keyboard parts, which I thought was really, really nice. And then it just kind of just fell together really quickly. But she's she's got a very different voice, you know. She's got a very some some almost like a naive kind of voice. It's sort of voice that anybody could sing along with. Queen of Hearts have got a very very powerful voice. It's a very dominating voice, whereas Ma Maya's voice is very very sweet. You know, like you know, like on the album New Order on the album, it's like Bernard doesn't have the best singing voice in the world. But it's not about that. It's about the character that's involved in the voice. Yeah. Yeah, the song I actually did ages ago, um, and it's not a song really, it's a piece of music. There's a track that I had, just, and uh, I adapted it and changed it a little bit for the album, but the basic idea was to have this sort of like um, almost militaristic kind of feel to it, but also tribalistic feel to it at the same time, you know? and it's very, very dark. And it's also about uh, giant mushrooms is the, 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 the vocal part at the beginning where you hear this announcement. Uh, that's the announcement which was made just before American soldiers uh, witnessed the first atomic bomb blast as, as soldiers. Not the first time they tested before Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but in the 50s. And the introduction by the officer when he was welcoming the, the soldiers was, welcome to the land of giant mushrooms. And I, I had this sound bite and I thought that's really interesting <laughs> because it also fits in with this theme of like, you know, like they were beginning with KVB with this nuclear attack warning that also, you know, we have to keep this in, in mind that this could also be our future if we don't do something about it. Maustadt was actually a made for B movie, the film about West Berlin, and and I just thought it'd just be nice to have that as the title track, you know, because it's a it's my track and it's also sums up the whole that concept of the album. It's, it's a bit kind of, you know, dark as well, not as kind of uplifting, I suppose, as say something like Maya song. It's very moody. Yeah. Manchester very well with very well uh, represented on my album. I've worked with Martin. We made a track for um, 5.1 called Let's Go Get Em. We did that together. And we've worked together in the studio quite a lot, actually, but we've never actually finished anything. Uh, uh, this is the first time I've worked with In Spiral Carpets, and it's probably this is the last time I'll work with In Spiral Carpets, I think, yeah. after this. It's, I don't think something the band will move on to do something else now. But this was the last kind of opportunity, really, and I thought, you know, I'd put that on the album just to say thank you. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, I've known, I've known the band forever, sort of thing, since they started. And um, Martin's a very, very old friend. He comes from the same place where I come from, Denton in Manchester. And also, there's two other bands that are from Manchester as well. One's called MFU, which is Modern Family Unit. And uh, this other band that people might know called New Order. Have you heard of them? They had a couple of hits in the 80s. And a couple of hits in the, in the 90s. And a couple of hits a couple of, like, last year as well. <laughs> Well, initially, when the band asked me to remix a song off their album, that's what, they, what do you want to remix, you know? And, and I initially said, OK, I want to remix Academic, because I had an idea. Immediately when I heard it, I thought, that's a really nice song, and, and I wanted to make it kind of like more electronic. Um, and as, as I was just about to start to make Academic, they asked me if I could quickly remix Singularity. So I ended up having to remix Singularity first, and that put things a little bit more into perspective for me, actually. I was really glad that I had that opportunity to mix Singularity first before doing yeah. Academic, because it made things a little bit easier as well. And then they used, they used the B-movie, actually, for the video for Singularity, so it all kind of coincided with what I was doing anyway. But I didn't want to put Singularity on my album, I thought it'd be like it's just best as it is as a single, and I'll just do academic for the for the album. So I've done a couple of versions. Like the the vinyl version of, of academic is different to the version which is on the actual CD. The CD version has a different start, different beginning, and for the game that was a completely different thing altogether. I I, I really thought. They've got a really beautiful song here, which gets swamped by all the guitars and all the drums and everything on their, on their, on their album. So the song itself is really, really nice. It's got a really interesting message, but you don't really get the message because it's hidden behind all this inf instrumentation. And so I, I just said, I want to I have a go at mixing this song and see what happens the way I think it should be. And so I just took everything out. I took all the guitars out, I took everything out, all the drums out. Because at the very, very end of their original song, which is on the album, did you hear just a slight, just if you really listen closely, you'll hear a, 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 a string melody played. It kind of comes and goes, it's gone. And I wanted to expand on that idea so i just I like i just took all the all, all the instruments throw them, threw them out and then just added like loads of strings and just made it into a string orchestra version of their song and then put the vocal on and then i played the bass over the top and just kept tom chapman's bass solo in the middle and just that was basically it really you know i used, I used elements of sounds and things in in the mix but it's not actually just nearly all my strings and all and a bit of the end strings from the from the original version and bernard's voice because i wanted to feature the voice i wanted to fo put focus on the voice on the message in the voice and i think it's a really really great great song and bernard was really surprised when he heard it he couldn't believe it it was like wow and after that they when they were asked to play in sydney opera house um last year they decided they would do this version in the Sydney Opera House. But when they when it was quite a lot of work kind of getting the orchestra together and it was, they realised, well, if we're do, just, just going to do one song, why don't we do the entire set as an orchestra? And that's what happened in, in Australia. Then they played the entire set with an orchestra and also did a kind of a hybrid version of my song, my version of their song, of the game, combined with their version. Because Steve said, what am I supposed to do? There's nothing for me to do. You know, I'm just, just supposed to sit there and just look at the audience or whatever. So he had to drum. So, so they kind of made this hybrid yeah. version. And, 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 and consequently, from that idea of playing with an orchestra in Sydney Opera House, uh, developed this current idea of like what is happening right now for the Manchester International Festival, where New Order have played with a synthesizer orchestra, because from that came this idea to do a synthesizer orchestra as opposed to a classical orchestra. And so what they just recently played in Manchester, they, 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 they have a synthesizer orchestra, a group of like 12 kids, uh, all playing synthesizers. It's, it's actually fascinating, it sounded great. Actually, I never even thought my life was interesting to anybody. I thought, you know, that I just lived my life and I didn't think anything about it. You know, the fact that, yeah, you know, Nick Cave had slept on my couch or whatever, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything special for me. It was only when the film started to, the process of the film started to work, you know, I, I realised that people are quite interested in, in what I've done. And as, as I've kind of unravelled my life, I realised I'd actually done quite a lot of things and quite a lot of things that no one else had ever done. And, and, and it, was, it was surprising to me even, you know, because I never thought about it, you know. And obviously then, you know, you, you, show, you show the film in Germany, you show it in Berlin, whatever, and it's acceptable because it's about Germany, it's about Berlin, it's about this division and stuff. But then you, with the film, I was taken to other countries, you know, like really places like Korea, you know, or Colombia, both on opposite sides of the earth. And people wanted to see the movie there. 
And uh, I was thinking to myself, like, what do they, what do they know about Berlin? You know, what do they really know about Berlin? And they see this movie for the first time, and they're kind of absorbed by what they see. And it's, um, it's quite, it's quite interesting the reactions that you get from people. Always positive because they understand, you know, this is a personal story which is being told about a city, but about what happened here. But also they get to see authentic images of Berlin you know it's like it's like the it's a reality it's how it really was and it wasn't just it's not this kind of glossed over version of what Berlin was like you know it is a bit as I think personally I think there's lots of things in there that we couldn't put in because we didn't have any film for it you know but, you know in that sense I found it's a bit glossy but in, in if you compare it to other films it's not at all glossy and I think that's because it's kind of authentic I think people can identify with that a lot more and, sp and especially these young people who come into Berlin right now you know new Berliners if you like they want to see a bit of what the history was like about West Berlin because West Berlin's forgotten. You know, the focus once the Berlin Wall came down, the focus shifted from West Berlin straight to the east. And as you look at the east, it's been, you know, cleaned up, gentrified, you know, whatever. Uh, it looks very pretty these days, you know, compared to what it used to look like. West Berlin's been completely forgotten and actually West Berlin hasn't really changed that much compared to the, to the east side. So there's still places there that are still exist, you know, from before even. You know. Um, and I think that people get to see that too. And I, th I just think it's you know it just works on a, on a lot of different levels. The music in the movie, as much as the the images that you see, and the story generally, it's just it's a cynical my cynical view of what West Berlin was like. <laughs> Just recently I did a tour of China, yeah, a two-month tour of China. It was more than incredible, it was a real adventure, seeing that, you know, two, three weeks before I left to go to China, the, the, the government decreed that all films depicting sex, drugs and violence were completely forbidden in China. And I'm like, well, that's all that our film's about. It's <laughs> only about sex, drugs, violence and music, you know, like, what else, you know? So we, sh we just thought, oh, well, we'll see how far we get. And we did like three cities. We did Chengdu, Dali, and then we went to Nanjing. And in Nanjing, um, the, the, my partner, the guy who, was who actually took me to, to China, is a DJ called Nibing. He said uh, the, the, the general secretary of the Communist Party of Jiangsu province, which Nanjing is the capital of, he said he wants to come and see the movie. So we're like, oh, well, you can't tell him, no, you can't come. You know, it's not, it's not the head of the Communist Party, it's Politburo member. But he, I think, you know, in the sense that, you know, he'd been told maybe to go and watch yeah. it. I don't know, you know, I've no idea. Uh, so, Anyway, he came to, to watch this film in, in a kind of open air club. Actually, we didn't show the film in cinemas, we showed the film in locations like clubs and bars. In Chengdu, we showed it in a, in a kind of a festival, if you like. So it wasn't really for the, just the general public to watch. It was like people who were interested in that kind of thing and in kind of clubbing and music, they'd go to this club. So we showed it in this club in Nanjing and he spent two hours watching the movie and then he spent another two hours listening to me DJ. And then after that, he said to my friend, every young person should have a life like that which was quite a nice compliment, really. And he invited us for lunch the next day. And he asked me one question, you know, after watching the movie, he said, yeah, he was there with this big entourage of people, the former mayor of Nanjing and like this nuclear physicist and God knows what. And he's like, we have, we have, we have a, big, a discussion after the movie and we have one question. And I was thinking, oh, they're going to ask me some kind of geopolitical question of some kind, some of the in-depth question. He goes, what happened to the penis? <laughs> he goes, what happened to the penis? It's like the, oh, okay, so that was the, that was the only question that he asked, and after that everything worked really really well. We we did we did a festival in Beijing, and we travelled to other places. Wuhan, which is in a fantastic city, Wuhan. We had to show it twice in Wuhan. Wuhan's so immense and so futuristic, but at the same time in the centre it's very old. Um, and we showed it twice there in, in Wuhan, because. Wuhan is so big, you can't, you can't accommodate all the people who want to see the film. You know? But the, it was very, always very young people in notice. It was very, only in Chengdu we had a few people who were kind of like my age, and that was like three or four people. Right? Uh, nearly all the, the, the screenings we had of the movie it was nearly always young people, and they were ab you know, eager to absorb this, what this film actually meant. And it was very, I think, very inspiring for them, because China's never had its own music scene. It's never had its own kind of defined music scene, which you say, you know, like in Germany we have you know electro and and this whole kind of like the techno scene that has kind of manifested itself after the Berlin Wall came down you know Britain obviously we've had our music scenes for, we created you know pop music with the beat and all, all, all the kind of genres that are filtered down glitter pop punk rock and everything China's never had anything like that they had this kind of like window if you like since since the late 1990s you know the first punk band 
actually came from Wuhan in 1996. You know, they were very daring at that point. It's just like 20 years after it actually had happened, you know. You know, the, the, the idea that they, they, they had to copy though first. They have to copy first to get their, their basics. And now you've got a set, a group of young people in China who are breaking out of that mold and doing new things and trying to do new ideas and put things together. And the way they, so they write the songs is very different to the way we write in the West. So there's that right now so in Chengdu, they've manifested this little scene which is just starting to emerge. And it's, you know, it's really exciting. It's, uh, I, I like there think, thinking, this is like 1976, you know, it's like 1976, 1977, where you've got these like bands who are just starting to come out. There's one band called Hormones, it's an all girl band. Uh, you know, they were really interesting, and I produced uh, three tracks for this band called Stolen, who are actually, in my opinion, the the, the pinnacle, if you like, and the, you know, the, the peak and this is avant garde of new music which is coming from China because they approach things in a very different way. Uh, they're not trying to sound like, you know, rock from America, they're not that trying to sound like Oasis or anything, you know, they're doing their own thing and they're very, very good. And, and, and I think that. There's a, you know, it's an interesting sound which is coming out of China right now, and I think that that is a, a thing which we should go and look at. You know, it's not it's not expensive to travel to China. People have this impression that it's very expensive. It's not. You can, you know, from Berlin, you can you can fly for like four hundred fifty euro to China return. You know. When you're there, it's very, very cheap, not so expensive. And, and you go to some, a place like Chengdu, which is a fascinating city as well. The, the, for me, I got this impression it's a bit like Manchester, you know? It's a, like a former industrial city that's been transformed and, and, and really interesting, you know? And my trip was very, very, very adventurous. To play in a festival in Beijing, for example, was the first time that they'd ever held a festival in Beijing, in the city centre. All the other festivals have usually been at outside in the, in, the, in the outskirts. And this was in the city center. It was, and it was a, a really nice mixture of like Western groups mixed with Chinese bands. And I went to another festival as well in, in, in Chengdu, which is also an amazing festival in the woods, you know, in the forest, B beautiful. And really, and really different, and the, and the atmosphere is really interesting. It's not like corporation kind of festivals yeah. that we have here in Europe, you know, with like health and safety regulations and yeah. patrolled by thousands of police and things like that. It's nothing like that. It was absolutely, I expected it to be like that, but it was nothing like that at all. It was very, very relaxed, which is contradictory to the image that people have of this idea of like what China supposed to represent uh, and, and I think that also right now for these new bands uh, which are starting to emerge that are not copies or you know they're not trying to play punk rock they're not trying to play American rock or whatever they they are the ones that are going to give China a musical face you know yeah. we know that China makes everything you know from clothes to mobile phones computers and, you know it's nice to see that the, the China would have a, a musical face it's not that the negativity of the political arena you know having a, a country which has got 1.8 billion people yeah. governed by this communist regime which people have this negative feeling about which I actually don't because I think to myself if once you've been there if you imagine you've got 1.8 million people and you suddenly say to them right tomorrow you're free and you can do whatever you want then you've got a, you've got mayhem on your hands so so they kind of keep this grip quite tight but relax it in certain ways you know like like we may, were able to show this film, which is actually forbidden in China. We were actually able to show it in China and, and have no problems. And, 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 and I think that that's the way, you know, they're, they, they try and keep a certain amount of control. But, you know, in various areas, obviously, political areas, it's very dark. But on the other hand, you know, there's a flexibility which can be seen a positive, you know, future. I find it quite interesting. Yeah. Actually, the, when we conceived B-Movie initially, we conceived it as a two-part film, as the first part is the 80s and the second part is the 90s. Because when I was doing all these interviews for, for the movie, Jörg Hopper, who was the producer of this film, realised that my life didn't stop in 1989, it carried on right till 21st century. So, so he was like, well, we should make it as a two-parter. So we've got B-Movie and we've got E-Movie, which is the second part. Which is, you know, like we're looking for people to fund us to help us to, to, to make this film. So the first film we had no funding whatsoever. So we hope that the second film will get a bit of funding that someone might invest in this movie because it's a lot of music and the, and the music rights are the things which cripple a film. Getting the music rights, and I don't want it want the film to just be, you know, parodies of techno songs. I want it to be the real the real thing. So we're, we're in, at the moment in the process of kind of putting that together. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't wait for it to be happen next year. You know? I think it's just energy and attitude and being able to f release yourself through music in this way. It's like the, people find they can, you know, r release their aggression in a sense through this kind of music because it just really, it's really adaptable to be able to write 
the right kind of like short lyric or whatever for that. It's, you're not writing a 20 minute aria, you know, piece of music. It's short and sweet and right to the point. That has never lost its appeal. We're all influenced by music from our past, you know. Everything that from my past is always put into my music now. If you, in, if you unraveled it, you'd find all these kind of like things that have happened in my life kind of put into this music, you know. And I just think that someone who is like maybe like 18, 19, who wants to be in a band, they can make all kinds of different music, but that is a very appealing kind of sound because it's very easy to produce. You don't need like loads of different synthesizers and computers or whatever. You just have like, you know, guitar, bass and drums and you can thrash it out. Or you don't even need, need a guitarist. You can do it like, you know, Royal Blood, it's just a bass guitar and a set of drums. You know, it's the energy that's generated by this kind of music. I think that young young people really get off on that, and I think that's that's a really important part of like you know youth culture. Uh, I, I think it's great that there's like loads of new bands, and they're and they're all different. They don't sound like you know po like punk of the seventies. You know, it was a very it was a very a very interesting time back then because it kind of like it was an upheaval. Prior to punk rock, you had all these established bands like Pink Floyd and Yes, and that who make these like you know triple albums of like prog rock. Yeah, you can like it, you know, but like when when punk came, it just kind of it was political uh, without it being just that only. And it was something which kind of like made you realise, well, oh, that's music of your generation. It was just kind of youthful, yeah, and it had this youthful energy with a statement and a, and a kind of foreboding that kind of put the shits up your parents, and that was something which really was appealing and I think that's, that appeal still is still there you know make make people scared you know yeah. question and, and things and I, and I really like that I think it's a great, a great and I can't wait to see the next lot you know well I'm producing a Chinese band right now called Hang on the Box for, for Chinese market their inspirations like malaria and things like that and I, also this Berlin kind of sound actually but they don't sound anything like them um, they kind of mix these different things together. So you've got this almost like a post-punk sort of like guitar sound with this electronic thing happening at the same time yeah. and very strange vocals sometimes on top uh, in English ease. But it's very, it, it makes the whole, whole sound, you know. I'm just doing that at the moment. Then I'm going to probably produce another Chinese band later on in the year, this band called Stolen. And in the meantime, I'm going to try and get e-movie fixed. So I'm working on that and doing some soundtrack work for some English people who are making a movie. And all these, I've got many different things that are kind of on the boil. It's just, I'm just waiting for the, the other people to be, to be ready, really. And probably, you know, in the meantime, I'll make tracks for my next album because I've already started on that anyway. Because it takes, it's su such a long process. And you, you, you're kind of like at the mercy of the time that you have. So it's, you've got, you know, the, the year is already over for me, really. Planned to the end. Well, I've done quite a few. Depeche Mode was quite one, yeah. and definitely, you know, and, and New Order, of course. There's, yeah, they, I mean, some of the new artists that are coming out, I think, are very interesting, you know. Like, I like, I like to work with the, the ones that are not so famous, to be honest, you know. Um, big, kind of like, the big artists that people already know it's nice to do. I mean, I love doing it. It's a, it's a real challenge because you have so much to, at stake, you know. I don't want to mess up too much. Because when you, you, you make some you know, remix for, say, Yellow or Depeche Mode or something, you've got a, an army of fans there kind of shouting in the knives, you know. If, if I mess up here, I'm doomed. But I like to work with new bands and new artists as well. Like working with KVB, I thought it was a, re it was a real honour for me, you know. I, I really like their music and, you know, and there's others out there that I'd really like to work with too. But I can't really say that, just one particular thing. I just think it's, like, it's up to them. They like what I do, you know. And like, for example, even, even like something like The Weeknd, you know, he did this song Secrets, which is just a re recent single. I really, really like that song. That was really great. Sort of sounds like a, like, you know, it's a mixture between, obviously, you know, the romantics and Tears for Fears mixed with modern talking yeah? but it's just the way it's kind of it's put it together I thought it sounded really good I'd like to do a remix of that but you know that's not up to me to say you know it's up to the record labels to decide if they can afford me